Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and thank you so much for joining us for one of our talks today. Today, we are joined by the wonderful Tunji Kasim to talk all about the CW's Nancy Drew. And I wanted to jump back to talking about when you first took on your character and this role in the show, because when we were first introduced to him, there were so many unknown elements and kind of a lot of intentional mystique narratively about a lot, lot of his backstory. Mm -hmm. um, and you've said how you yourself didn't know necessarily which direction they were going to take your character in at the beginning. And so I was really fascinated in the way in which you constructed a character and went through character development, all of the research that you pulled into it, but really in a way where you had to build a foundation that gave you the ability to be able to pivot into different directions, depending on where mm -hmm. the scripts ended up taking him as a character and mm -hmm. some of the elements that they would eventually reveal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's it's a relatively new format for me to be working in as well tv um i did a tv gig right right at the start of my career back in you know, a while ago now um and i was a regular in that for one we went for one season and that's really the only consistent experience i've had working in the tv medium where as you say the character starts out one place you don't know what their end place is and it's constantly evolving and you know and that's that's a, that's a good thing. I think it's very fun for the writers, obviously, to do that. But from an actor's point of view, that can be a tricky a tricky thing to navigate. It's, and especially given my background, because I've done predominantly theatre, which you know you get you have the play, and it has a beginning, middle, and an end, and then you rehearse and structure around that. Um, so switching formats has is a challenge, but you know something a challenge I was looking for, and I very much came to America uh, in 2019 looking for a, a TV job, so looking to develop those muscles. Um, but I think it's it's something to lean into. You can't because it's inevitable. It's that's that's the format we work in. That's a medium we work in. That's the way this 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 show works. And so you can't lean away from oh being stuck in a rigid. This is no. I established this back in three episodes ago, so we have to stick to that, and that's the way it has to be. You really have to um, commit to the moments, and that's I suppose something I learned. I played. I played. Um, I played Edmund Edmund and King Lear. And he is a very uh, his 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 emotional track is is kind of uh, quite uh, at times felt to me very inconsistent for want of a better word, and I fought that and fought that because I'm a fairly logical guy as well um, personally. So I fought that and fought that and fought that to a degree, and I found actually the best way it works is you just commit in the moment to whatever that character is doing. And as long as you're committed, and as long as you you find a way to logically justify how they got there within the scene, within that moment, then it tracks and it carries and it feels authentic to that person. So if he does something contrary later on, of course you can have conversations with the writers and say, look, this moment doesn't quite match with this moment. Can we find a way to bridge it a bit better? But I find as long as you fundamentally stick to committing to whatever emotion he's in at that point, it feels like the same person, no matter what that thing is. And obviously, if it's a drastic shift, a drastic choice, then that's something else. That's just bad writing. But fortunately, we don't have bad writers on this show. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's committing to the moment. It's being relaxed and, and trusting enough that the story is a story, the plot is the plot, and as long as you're committed and uh, bringing some kind of authenticity to, to those emotions and those moments, then it will track and the audience won't question and go, oh, that's weird, that that, that thing happens there. Um, so that's my job. Plot, that's the actors. Um, I mean, sorry, sorry. Plot, that's the writers. I'm an actor. <laughs> um, so yeah, plot is kind of the writers and they take it in weird and fantastical, fantastical uh, directions. And that's, that's a lot of fun for them to have. So yeah. And because you do have such extensive experience in the theatre and on stage, and to your point, you get so much opportunity to really finesse and dissect every single line of dialogue and every single choice through that really extensive mm. rehearsal process. And television is obviously notoriously fast paced. And mm -hmm. a lot of times you're jumping into scenes where there's no rehearsal, but even mm -hmm. when you do, it's very brief. And when you have those moments of brief rehearsal for a scene, have you found that you've kind of taken the scope of everything that you do in the theatre and created an alternate version where you've kind of 
picked out the pieces that are most useful for you to be able to do a more distilled down version of that when you've only got a limited amount of time like these are the these are the tactics that i find work really well and this is the way mm -hmm. that i can take this entire process but do it in the way that i need to be able to do it in this particular moment yeah and i think there are opportunities as well even even in nancy drew and the way we work and film this that you get to do a mini play to a degree because larry tan who is um who was our uh, first producing director and he he directed the pilot and the first few episodes of nancy drew and has directed many episodes since he uh he's kind of theater based to a degree um and so he draws from that so we've had a couple of sequences where in the edit, it's 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 different scenes, but in reality, uh, it's one scene that's been split up in the edit. Does that make? I hope that makes sense. So we've been able to play uh, ten, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten page scene as a one up, and that is just thrilling for me as an actor because then it feels like okay, we're just this is a play, um, and so those moments are really fantastic for me. And those are where I feel most comfortable, probably, or most excited that I can bring these two mediums that I'm trained in together. But then also, I think one of the things I have to adjust to coming from theatre and now doing more TV is there is no one take. There is no one perfect take. Uh, because obviously, when you're doing it live every single night, in front of a thousand people, you're trying to get that one best take you can because that's that's a thousand people that will probably just see that one take of what you did. Sure, the next night you can try something different, um, but they only get one opportunity. And with with camera, it's completely different. Right? You can get as many, provided you have the time, and time is money, of course. But provided you have the time, you can try as many things as you want and mix it up as much as you want. So that's been a real thing I've had to kind of develop and trust and lean into that there is no for want of a better word, failure, because they'll just edit that out or they just use another take. You can't fail as long as you're getting the lines out. <laughs> um, uh, so you can you can feel free to try different things and kind of bounce the different things around, which is the beauty of, of, of camera. Um, so yeah, you it's a different medium and I have to work in a very different way, but there are definitely opportunities where I can take the, the, the camera skills, uh, the, the, sorry, the stage skills and put them into the camera work. Um, and that's, that's very satisfying for me. And we actually, sorry not to ramble on too long, but we actually, uh, which is unusual once again for Larry, he implemented this was there's no sides. So usually actors have sides on, on set where the scenes you're filming that day have the script on them. Um, and then you can just refer to them if and whenever you need to. But Larry uh, very much was keen to implement, we don't have sides on the set. You come you come to set prepared, you already know the words, you've already absorbed the words, so you have the room and the space to play. And I think that's a very theater thing where you, you don't have the scripts to hand uh, constantly. Um, so that's something else that I found very comfortable and, and I've, I've really enjoyed having that uh, on our set. Yeah. And one of the other things when you first took on this role as well is obviously research elements that come into play. And, and mm. you've spoken a lot about how you worked with an organization called ARC in Los Angeles mm -hmm. to really um, understand on, on a very emotional and granular level your character's experience and understanding the prison rehabilitation system mm -hmm. and how that would impact him. Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds like that allowed you to approach the character from a very emotionally grounded space in the way that you then understood this journey for him. And given that the show has so many dramatic elements, you know, obviously we have all of the supernatural aspects that come in. Has that also really informed the way that you approach scenes throughout the series overall now in which you're looking at something which is sometimes a slightly fantastical element and then you're really thinking about the granular emotion of, okay, my friends are in danger, the person I love is in danger. Um, there's a possibility that, you know, fatality may, you know, come for me sooner mm -hmm. than I expected. And I need mm -hmm. to consider that and think of that. And what are the things that mm -hmm. I want to be doing with my life? And there's mm -hmm. so many ways in which it really distills it down. And so has that initial research been a really grounding influence on the way that you approach a lot of these scenes overall as a result? Absolutely. And I think it sets, it sets a tone, right? I think it sets a tone, once again, going back to the no sides thing, and you come to the set with your lines already down, it just sets a culture and a tone and an atmosphere in which to work in. And I think definitely having that foundation of 
uh, tangible real life research where I, I very fortunately, you, you reference ARC, I very fortunately got to meet some guys who work with our organization who had recently just come out of correctional facilities. Um, so we're very, very fresh and we're very honest and very open with me and our showrunner, Melinda. We sat down for two, three hours and just chatted with them. And you can't come away from something like that and feel like, okay, well, now I'm just going to flip into TV world and just make it all fantastical and over the top and just exploit, exploit what's a very real experience for so many young American men out there. Um, so I think, yeah, it definitely sets a tone. And it, as you say, it, it kind of provides a foundation in which to launch off. So however many seasons this goes, um, I know that I have that foundation for Nick, which is, which is steeped in a very real experience and a very... Uh, the raw experience, emotionally raw and emotionally vulnerable experience. Um, and that allows me, yeah, to build and build and build and build and make him as more, more and more complex with each opportunity I get. And that's one of the one of the, the points of emphasis I had with the writer uh, and the showrunners, the showrunner and the writers when we first got together and I was offered this part and we had conversations about Nick was sure we can do this thing especially as a as a black american man you could say it's a cliche that he's been to prison and he's gone through the correctional facility um correctional facilities but also it's a reality that a lot of young black men in america find themselves in unfortunately dis disproportionately so if we're going to do that which could be a dramatic cliche we've got to make sure that we're steeping it and we're making steeping it in a reality and we're making sure that there's nuance and complexity and what are the emotional effects that that leaves in a human being when when they come out of a situation like that and they're trying to build their life. Um, also, another other layer to Nick is that he's also in a completely new environment for him. He's not from Maine. He's from Florida. He's from, you know, the, the opposite side of the country. Um, and that's something actually we're going to lean into in season three, um, how his present life clashes or complements his past life. Because I think there's a lot of, there's a, there's a before and a now with Nick. Um, and he hasn't quite melded those two things together or come to terms with those two. He seems to have kind of just use Maine as an opportunity to restart his life all over again. But inevitably, your past is still your past and it's still there with you. So one of the things we're really leaning into season three is, to, is how does that past catch up with him? And we actually have some uh, some as Nick, some of Nick's Florida friends coming to town, um, so that that past will be a physical manifestation in a person. Uh, and how does how does Nick respond to that? And of course, you know he has things, he has big big events in his life, like uh, this proposition George George has proposed to him. Um, how he responds to that will have a significant impact on him and George's relationship. But I also it also makes. Nick um, go into some deep reflection as to where he is in his life currently and where he's been and is he comfortable with those two kind of marrying up marrying up see I used that as a pun there you go <laughs> And, and obviously beyond even the research that you did with ARC, there were other things like, you know, really understanding a lot of the the day to day of what it means for him to be working as a mechanic and mm. his past as a football player mm -hmm. um, and studying a lot of those elements in, in implementing them into him as character. But have you found that now that you're on season three, that there's almost spaces where you're researching new elements or new aspects of him as a character, or just even the idea of the fact that when you develop a character for television, like you we were saying, it's not just about developing them once, there's almost aspects of character redevelopment now that you're getting to a third season. Yeah, I mean, there's constant evolution. Uh, I mean, it would be stale writing and, and stale performing if, you know, it was just the same person over and over again that you see. There's constant, one of the great things about the writing of the show is that there's constant evolution of the characters. And I think um, Nick's relationship with George is is one of the things actually that um, is part of Nick's evolution. I think he's a very, he, he's, a, he's a reserved, for want of a better word, a bit of a reserved character, a bit of a reserved dude. When when things go down, he, he gets involved and he does what he has to do, but he very much avoids things escalating. And I think in season two, we really lent into some Nick asserting himself a bit more and standing up for himself a bit more in certain situations. And I think that's, you know, that's, that's from George. George takes no guff from anyone. Um, and so, yeah, that things like that rub off on him and he is he is developing and he is evolving as far as research goes there's constantly things popping up you know i i love doing the asl american sign language scenes with um tom uh, anthony who plays tom uh, ace's dad 
Um, and that's always fun to, I, I don't, I don't uh, sign. Uh, so it's great to have scenes where, okay, I've got to do this research and got to do this homework into this signing, things like that, just keep you on your toes. And we've got more football stuff that's coming up and I'm not that learned about high school football and how it works. So you've always got to research little bits that come up and, and there's little nuggets that always, it's just, and you know, Nick's foundation is, is kind of, I, I'm, I suppose I'm of the belief where you kind of can't research enough. You think, you know, of course, that you, you don't want to do too much because you don't want just excessive, uh, uh, a kind of bloated mind of just useless facts. But at the same time, you know, new details come up that you've got to make sure that what you're saying and the words you're talking, the, the, what you're talking about referencing is, is accurate with the reality of it. So there's, you know, it's just little things like we were just going through the scripts the other day. And instead of saying um, juvenile detention, he went to a correctional facility because juvenile detention is like jail. Juvenile detention is where you go pre-trial and during the trial um, and before you're convicted. And when you're convicted and you actually go to prison, then that's a correctional facility. So it's things like that, just making sure you're getting, you're staying on your toes, you're staying accurate, you're, you're getting the vernacular right. Um, and you're constantly, yeah, you're constantly researching, constantly reading. Now, of course, as, you, as the season goes on and you get to know the character a bit more, there is a comfort that, that you have to appreciate and, and enjoy. Um, but also you've got to, it's, it's, it's a balance because you've also got to stay in your toes and making sure that you're actively engaged in the script and actively engaged in the character. And you're not just coasting along because it's season three now and I'm cozy. Um, you've got to stay engaged and stay active. Otherwise, yeah, things get, you, you get complacent and then the work you suddenly find that, oh, the work I did wasn't particularly good or particularly interesting. And it's for a reason. It's because you haven't stayed on point, which is a challenge in itself. And because to the point that you were just making where he is slightly more of a reserved character and keeps things a little close to his chest at times, but is kind of going through that journey of becoming a little bit more assertive bit by bit, have you found that it, you're, it's kind of very easy to naturally feel out where he's going to become a bit more external with his expressions? Or is it something where you find yourself kind of mapping it out and tracking it a little bit for yourself? I think it changes script to script. As going back to the, you know the, the, the first is point we were discussing I think it changes script to script and he finds himself in different situations and I I it's my job I suppose to make sure that I'm finding those opportunities within the script to push Nick in a slightly different direction or show a different side a slightly different side to him um and yeah the, you know the writers give you the structure and it's your job it's my job as an actor to make sure I'm eking out everything the writers are giving me but also presenting something a little bit new and a little bit different um I think <laughs> I think there's a there's a I think for me as an actor, as a, naturally as a performer, but also the way Nick has been kind of shaped, there's a tendency, there's a possibility for him to be quite serious and quite, not moody necessarily, but quite, you know, straight down the line type guy. So season two, one of the points of emphasis for me was to make sure I'm finding comedic beats within, within, uh, within his more serious mind. Because um, our show, one of the things our show does fantastically well, and I think, you know, uh, within the writing, within some of our performances, is comedy. There's a lot of comedy. There's a lot of good, good, good banter, good wit, um, in amongst all the supernatural stuff. So there's got to be a relief from all the serious research about correctional facilities and all that kind of stuff. It's just, you know, it's just bringing a balance to your performance and making sure you're you're giving lots of different uh, dynamics. Yeah. You've also had such a great opportunity to explore his relationship with Nancy and you and Kennedy McMahon have really kind of created this very different type of intimacy. If we look at the very first couple of episodes to where that trajectory has gone with their dynamic now, mm -hmm. it's so fascinating to watch that journey and, and just like that gradual build to a different place of intimacy and trust that they have with each other. Um, mm -hmm. And was interested in how, as you get further into the show, there's also more spaces where the two of you are really able to find a lot of that unspoken dynamic and, and the way mm -hmm. that that really connects them just as much as the things that they are saying to each other. Mm -hmm. scenes now mm -hmm. yeah and i think that's a that's a building of chemistry between actors as well because obviously we're, we are three seasons in now and um there is definitely i don't know how i feel like there's unresolved <laughs> unresolved stuff between nick and nancy but that's just me as tingy that's not necessarily what the writers think um 
but he's very much committed into this relationship with George. That doesn't mean that doesn't take away from that relationship at all. I think he's 100% committed into that relationship as well. And that means a lot to him. Um, but I think, um, you know, the, the connections between Nick and Nancy with, you know, Nancy's mother being his social worker and things like that. And um, how her being a large part of the reason why he hung around in Maine. Um, and obviously they got into a relationship and all that kind of unfolded. Um, I think there's still inevitably um, fallouts of emotions uh, still there um, and the way it's ended. But also what I think is fantastic about the writing is we have, we have navigated, and it's believable to me, we have navigated into a space where these two people still operate quite closely together in life and death situations. Um, but they have a trust and they have an intimacy and they, there's a maturity to their relationship where it functions and it's not just dysfunctional and um, especially with, you know, the friendship between George and Nancy, that that has also managed to, to remain functional. Um, and I think that's any, another show might have, you know, really lent into the drama and the kind of, the, the, for want of a better word, bitchiness between uh, uh, those two those two characters over, you know, romance is, romance is complicated, right? Um, but we've not gone that route. We've gone a route where, yeah, there is a maturity to these guys, even though they're so young and they still function as a group. Um, now, it would be very interesting to explore moments where it doesn't function and where um, kind of, complicated emotions and feelings are brought up and uh, hopefully we get to we get to explore all that because that's all very rich emotional content to kind of delve into and i think it's one of the things our show does well of course we have the supernatural elements and all the plot driven stuff but we also find moments and find substantial and meaningful beats to explore these guys emotional lives and emotional connections to each other because that's what i'm interested in the most and that's what i feel my job is to 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 paint the emotional picture of these people and these characters and make sure empathy is elicited from the audience as much as possible and you were mentioning just before we started taping that for season three you're currently block shooting two episodes at a time mm -hmm. um and so i was interested in how that's really created a little bit of a shift in how you're all working on episodes because within that you have the added benefit that you get to spend more time with a director once you're building that rapport and building that chemistry and also mm -hmm. they get to know you more intimately as a performer and know mm -hmm. what kind of that you need from them almost and the guidance that you're looking for in scenes and and certain character moments but then at the same time Time, there's so much emotional tracking that comes with that because when you watch the show two subsequent episodes don't always feel the same you know they, mm -hmm. can, they can be jumping around to completely different stylistic spaces mm -hmm. um and so how how is kind of like the benefit of the relationship with the directors and the challenge of, of the emotional tracking kind of married into a slightly different way of working this season now that you're shooting that way um i, th I think it's you know i think that's because we were Season one, we were working episode to episode. So every new episode was a new director and you'd had eight days to film one episode and then you filmed that, moved on to the next. Now eight days, eight working days is not much time to meet a brand new person uh, that you've never met before and get into this creative relationship with them and expect there to be media chemistry. It can happen, but it's rare. So now we're, we're shooting two episodes at a time. So that's 16 days in total with a director that is, allows yeah, for that building of chemistry. Um, and so by day eight or so, you actually feel comfortable with each other and you feel like, okay, I, I kind of know how you work and they know how I work. Um, so you can relax into it a bit more. Um, so that's definitely a benefit and that's definitely a good thing. As far as shooting two episodes at the same time, where especially when you're yeah, jumping thematically from one episode, a dramatic scene to filming right after a comedic scene from the next episode. So not only have you, are you having to track storyline, but you're also having to quite quickly shift tone. Um, that is a challenge, most definitely, but it's, you know, it's part of the job and it's part of how do you be in the moment you are in. Um, and that's definitely, definitely part of developing and, and creating a muscularity around that skill. But I find also that because we are doing, look, you can, you can show up and set and you can just be in the moment and you can just do, okay, whatever this scene is, is what I'm going to get. And that's cool. But I think also you, 
maybe coming from more of a theatrical background where I am more, my, my third eye is more on the bigger story and where is Nick? This is one scene, of course, but where is he in his bigger, bigger arch in this storyline? You do have to do the homework before you come on set. You do have to know, okay, this is an opportunity where I can do this because I know it will complement something that's going to go on in another scene later down, later down the line. So you've, you've always got to have that, that, um, your eye on a, on the bigger picture, as well as making sure you're committing and and exploiting and milking as much as you can out of whatever scene you're in, because I think yeah you can show up and just say the lines and that works you know, but also if you can say okay I'll say the line or I'll do this thing in this moment with this actor because I know that later on that's gonna that's gonna influence that in another way, so you kind of as I going back to what I was saying before you have to stay on your toes and and. There is a version when you don't stay on your toes and you can just show up and just do the work and say the lines and that's fine. And many actors work like that and that's cool. My jam is, you know, I, I very much appreciate having the bigger picture and making sure I can exploit as much as possible every moment and planting things in this scene that will pay off in another scene. Um, so yeah, it's it's part of just staying staying on the ball and making sure you've you've done your work before you come on set. And when you got cast in this role, this was the first time that you were coming over to the States and doing pilot season. And I think this mm. was, you know, the second audition that you did during pilot season. Mm -hmm. And obviously it's an entire, entirely different system within the industry than we have in the UK. Mm -hmm. And so what was that process of really navigating and understanding and some of the learning curves that came with just figuring out that entire, you know, engine that is pilot season in, in the industry within the States? It was an eye opener, uh, and I was, I was in hindsight, I was pretty naive as to how it all worked, which was not a bad thing because thankfully it kind of it worked out. Um, but I was pretty naive as to it was a successful pilot season. I, I don't mean to sound big headed or arrogant or anything like that, but it was a successful pilot season where I was kind of in a position where I had choices um, of which which projects I wanted to work on. Um, and that was extremely, you know, talking to other actors and, and, and as I say, in hindsight now, knowing other people's experiences, you know, being inside the show now, I appreciate it's just, it's rare just to get a show made, um, much less go three seasons. Um, so it's, it's, it's really been educational for me. Um, but I definitely came to America with a bit of naivety going, okay, we'll see what happens. And, things happened and I'm very grateful for that. Um, but it's a hustle, it's a real hustle. Um, and yeah, you just, you, you learn, you learn, obviously there's a cultural, there's a cultural difference between how the States works and, and the UK works, but also once again, going back to having predominantly done theater, I just came up with a production of Anthony Cleopatra, the national, um, straight into pilot season. And so that was a kind of a, a big, a big shift as well in for me. Uh, so yeah, lots of lots of adjusting, lots of learning. But it's always good to to keep learning and keep you know stretching your experiences and stretching, stretching your existence and what skills you're picking up and the people you're meeting. And you know, it's fantastic to be able to to come on here and talk to you about Nancy Drew, which is a, you know a book I read up, I, I grew up reading. Um, as a kid, you know, we had two or three Nancy Drew books at home. So it was just, it was just thrilling. I remember getting the email going, wow, okay, this is exciting. You immediately recognize it. Um, and so it's thrilling to that I'm here having come out and just taken a punt at, at uh, pilot season uh, in 2019 that here I am, you know, in Vancouver now. I didn't think I'd be in Vancouver, but hey, we film all over the world. Uh, um, and it's fantastic, and I love Vancouver. So yeah, it's fantastic that, that I get to I get to do this. And of course, we came through the pandemic, which shut down a lot of theatre. So I'm particularly grateful that I I chose when I chose to you know uh, make an emphasis of getting more camera work, uh, because if I was still doing theatre, then my my income and my art would be significantly hampered right now. Um, so yeah, it's been great. It's been great. And, you know, Americans are very generous in letting, uh, us Brits in. So, uh, I'm very grateful and thankful for that. Um, and if, yeah, it's just cool. It's cool to just play in a, in a, you know, you're making a TV show. I remember all through season one and season, even season two, I would just turn to, you know, Kennedy or whoever, who was also, you know, fairly, fairly new to the game and uh, making a TV show and just turn to her and say, we're making a TV show. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the excitement of that is just it's cool it's a cool thing to do and you know enjoy it while you can grab it grab it with both hands and and get the most out of it because it won't necessarily always last um so enjoy what you got while you got it well, I'm so glad that it all worked out the way that it did so that we get to watch your great performance on the show and want to thank you so much for sharing all of this in such a granular level about your craft. Really, really genuinely appreciate it. Thanks so much, Tunji. Thank you for your time.